Hi there YouTube, Briar Lynn here, and I'm trying to use my husband's tablet. We'll see how this works. But I wanted to share with you my altar space for Beltane. Um, I just finished futzing with it until it was quote unquote right, and I wanted to show you. So here's the overall view. The little shot class will be moved when I actually start the ceremony for tonight. But yes, I had taken out all my summer type things, everything I wanted to use for spring leading into summer, and I just wanted to share. Um, this is my working altar. So usually it's much more sparse than this because I need to have room to move about. But for the sake of today, I obviously added some things that normally are not here, such as the crystal grid. Usually I don't have a crystal grid unless I am... Actually, no, this is my first crystal grid, come to think of it. Um, I have used crystals on my altar, just not in a grid. But yes, we're going to move now, move closer, and I'll start from the left to the right. So first, whoop, sorry, you're going to go a little shaky for a moment. Not used to holding this. There we go, that's a little better. So first, I have my athame, which I have shown on camera before. And I placed it over here because I wanted it on this altar cloth. This is actually a shawl that my mom bought for me, but I can't really put live flowers on my altar because Pickle will eat them. <laughs> She's my flower and plant eater. She will nibble on anything green. So I thought these colors were magnificent and I know you can't really see it too well, but there are in fact cats all over it. So that's rather fitting. And I love wearing it. The colors are beautiful. It's so soft. But I don't mind putting it here. It's not going to be here all the time, so I'm not too worried about wax and such. We have my Bastet. Although I'm moving towards a more Celtic path at the moment, I still like to honor Bastet because she was my first goddess. She was the first who I reached out to and she reached back. And I just think she's lovely. Oh, and Pickle's coming to say hello. No, I know, you want to lay on it. There you go. Uh-oh, sneaky peeky. <laughs> I have something I need to show you guys later, but not in this video. So yes, I have my bustette. I have an image of the divine um, feminine. I know, again, it's Egyptian themed, but... Um... But that's where I started, and so that's what I have the most of, and I'm trying to move Pickle off the altar again. Because she loves the altar. She'll lay, like, right next to me while I'm practicing. And then for... I'm trying to decide where to go now. I also have my mortar and pestle. Um, this is actually made of onyx. I don't use it as often as I should, but I do like it. I really think it's pretty and fantastic. And then this is a little bottle from my grandmother. My grandma Smith has a lot of antique little bottles and she decided to give me some of them. And this is one of them and inside I just have some sea salt and a couple little yellow rosebuds. Um, and speaking of yellow, I put up a yellow candle for the Divine Feminine for Beltane. And I have a love-hate relationship with yellow. When I was a kid, it was one of my favorite colors. Um, I don't actually associate it with air. I feel... I feel that it's not an air color for me. But I really wanted to incorporate yellow because this time of year in Michigan we get a lot of dandelions and other yellow flowers. Coming back down, because I forgot to talk about it, 
my little bell. Um, I'm actually, that's the cats. Um, I'm actually in the process of taking the color off of this bell because I, the color was already fading. It's an, it's not an antique, but it's old. And the color was already fading and chipping off and I decided to help it along. I'm not finished yet, but I'm not going to try and work on it more today. But yes, this is what I use to represent air during the spring and summer. So I always start my calling of the elements with air, and then I move on to fire, and then I move on to water, a little cauldron, and then I move it down to earth. This has always been my representation of earth. I, I adore this fossil. Like it was, it was a great purchase. Got that up at the lake. Um, and when I start my ceremony, I always start with incense as well. Like this is my offering most of the time. Um, and of course there's my decanter of water, a little bit from the lake, a little bit from my parents' home, a little bit from here. <laughs> and then moving over to the right side. I have a blue candle for the Divine Masculine. I know a lot of people like using blue for the Divine Feminine for Beltane, but I went with my gut and I felt blue better represented the masculine energies in my home, which are represented by this gentleman here. I'll pick him up. He's a little harder to see. He is. And actually, both of these little statues, the uh, female and the male, were actually at my wedding. I bought them specifically for our hand fasting. And there's more pickle because she's being a bugger and wants all the attention. Now I have a dough here because my stag is currently in surgery. Um, when I first bought him, Spud knocked off one of his antlers and unfortunately a roommate, our roommate tossed it away. And then a few months later, Spud broke off. See, she's trying to eat the flower. No, honey. No. Um, and recently his other antler broke off during another Spud episode. So sadly, he is in surgery. But this is still good. It's still a deer. I feel deer overall, like, represent, for me at least, masculine energy. And my little love spell that I showed you guys, I'm actually going to be using this in the bath. And while I can't put, like, a ton of flowers, as you saw, because she was trying to eat it, um, I did buy myself some yellow carnations today. And I took this off of the bouquet and put it in here. So, yes, that's the right side. And also on the right side, I will have this filled with mead, because I do feel um, a masculine energy in my home really likes mead. I don't know who it is. I believe it's fey energy of some kind. But they get the Lonely Tequila Rose. It was a part of a set, and then one day, the other shot glass fell into the hole in the sink, and I didn't know that it was down there until I turned on the disposal, and it totally, like, wrecked the bottom part of it. So yeah, it's the Lone Tequila Rose shot glass. Alas. But it's still good. It'll still hold an offering, and I'll probably put that right about there. So yeah... That'll happen. And usually I have a more decorative candle, but I don't have any votives right now that are really super pretty or fun to look at. So right now I just have a little tea light. But that's fine because the real show stunner is going to be this crystal grid. As I said earlier, I actually have never had a crystal grid on my altar before. So I, I didn't want to look up anything. I didn't want to be influenced by anything on the outside, so I just kind of went with my gut. And I started with my selenite wand in the middle to kind of like bring all the energies into the middle and purify the space. So I have that one. And then I'm going to start with the amethyst point. Um, this amethyst has been with me for a long time. And I love all the little like inclusions it's got in there. I don't know if you can see them all. But they're in there and they're wonderful. So I wanted that at the top because it does have a point. 
and I wanted it to go towards the fire and the water and yes. And then I have my little chunk of calcite. I think it's heat treated, but that's okay. I don't mind. It's still really pretty and it fits well in my hand. And then we come down to the carnelian, the little window carnelian, but I'm having it face this way because I wanted the pink to be the forerunner. Yes, hello pickle. I know you're still here. And then it comes down to my rose quartz, which is very pretty and lovely. Um, I actually struggled to fit this one in, but I found a way. Um, serpent stone right here my chunk of malachite right there moving pickle <laughs> and i actually find that the serpent stone and malachite are becoming buddies they they're really pulling from each other which makes sense given what apparently they are meant to draw upon my amazonite I really love this little guy. Just so so soft. Like it's strange. It's it's a stone, so it shouldn't feel soft, but it does. Like it it just I love it. I can't I got to stop playing with it. And then my sodalite. And this is the other piece. I had a really hard time moving in there, but I wanted to have this blue. So yeah, just a very simple little grid. Um I'm, I'm sure there are some people screaming, no, you need to have this stone there and this one there. But this is what I felt. This is what I wanted to do. And then I'll just kind of sneak you over here. This isn't a part of the altar space so much right now. But I'm kind of doing like a mass cleansing, charging, so on. Um, this is where I put all my stones is in this little dish that I got from Walgreens this year. Um, and I will be doing a Beltane reading for myself, so that's right here, very close. Um, my beautiful little Himalayan salt lamp that we got as a gift from said roommate. Down there I've got Bacchus and some electrical cords because that's a tea light warmer um, that for some reason has a pin in it. And then when I'm trying to charge amulets and stuff, I'll put them in there. And there's a pickle butt. <laughs> um, this is my Rider weight deck. And I'm still cleansing it, so I've just got salt sitting on top of it. I use this in my workings. So that's right there at hand. Um, don't want to show you that stuff because it's just cleaning my smudging spray. And then I have this little goodie, and I have a nail on it to hold it in place until I'm done working with it and a bit of tourmaline to help cleanse it of anything. I already did a Palo Santo cleansing of this deck, but yeah, sneaky peeky. Um, the Damon Tarot, and I will be doing a review on this. I just haven't gotten to it yet. It only came in my possession Saturday. So yes, I'm looking forward to that. And of course, I've got my smudging spray because I smudged the crap out of it. Not because it was Damon, but because it's the first, like, tarot. And I'll explain why I'm doing quotes again. But it's the first deck that I've had associated with um, Damon. And, like, just, it's the first deck since Tarot of the Spirit that I bought, like, in packaging, not secondhand. So I really wanted to get it filled with my own energies. But I'm not doing anything with that deck today because I am focusing on Beltane. And I'm trying to get it all in the shot. <laughs> there we go. So I hope you guys all have a lovely day. I hope that all of your rituals are fruitful and that you have a great time, that you enjoy each other's company. And also a shout out to our friends in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> shout out to our friends in the Southern Hemisphere who are celebrating Samhain. <laughs> I better go before Pickle makes a total disaster of everything. 
But yes, I do hope you guys all have a wonderful season, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Be good to each other.